ハロー。ハロー。ああ。it's been a while。by which I mean it's been exactly the right amount of time it should be。so。I'm gonna start。a thing。ああ。I have a quest for five ox slayers。so I'm gonna just。chuck them down。That's it for battle planning.、Um, yeah,、uh, I guess we will be doing this today、uh, alongside reading, I mean, stream, stream raiders, alongside reading、um, fucking TGAB.、Um, it's been a while since we've done TGAB.、Uh, it's not been a while since streaming. That's only been a week, which is what it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, 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 be, I'll, be, I'll be doing a small, slow stream, I guess.、Uh, just chilling for a bit before we start.、Um, Sorry, give me a second. Oh well, doesn't matter.、Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Alright,、um, we have Stream Raiders running. If anyone wants to join in, exclamation mark battle. We will be reading. T gap today,、uh, which is exclamation mark TGAB. I should have captions up, hopefully. It seems like it's working, but I can never tell on my end.、Uh, oh, I have an ad in progress. Fuck, I forgot about that. Oh, oh yes, yes. I have, I have a battle running. Yes, thank you for telling me.、Um, there we go, the ad's done. Fuck, I should have. Thought about that before I started, huh? Right, we are going to be reading TGAP.、Uh, it has been a while since we've done that. I think it's close to like four or five months.、Um, quick、uh, things. Yesterday. There we go. Yesterday we had a follow from Olive. Thank you, Olive.、Uh, do not know why, but a thank you nonetheless. Um. I will be reading The Gods of Bastards!、Uh, exclamation on TGAB if you want to see where to read more.、Uh, we will be starting book two finally. Book one has, was completed four or five months ago now?、Uh, 
Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> Book one's been completed for a while. Um, the previous, uh, the previous book, I guess, the previous chapters were all uh, spoken, read aloud by me, and the you can find the vods on my YouTube exclamation mark socials should give you the YouTube. Um, what else? Yeah, that's really about it. Um, you can also see it like right. Right. There we go. Right there. Pretty much. Uh, that's the YouTube link. Also the Instagram link if you want to see stories from when I went to PAX. Um, yeah, nothing else. Nothing else. Uh, any other updates? Oh, I, I was sick. It might be why my voice sounds a bit different. Um, I had a flu. And a cough and fever, um, but it was not COVID. I was testing negative, so no clue. Um, <coughs> I will still cough. I will try to cough away from the mic. Um, I don't have my headphones again um, because I left them in Australia. Uh, I'll get them soon ish. <laughs> I'll get them next month. Uh, but Till then, you're gonna have to deal with streams where you can hear alert notifications. And I can't. Well, I can. But they sound a lot further away than right next to my ears, so there's gonna be a lot less jump scares. Which probably should be how I'm doing this anyway, but you know, jump scares make it funny. Um, yeah. We'll be reading uh, TGAV. Uh, this is book 2, chapter 1, 2 1. <clears throat> uh, where we last left off actually you know what I should just do this where we last left off we had been introduced to the entire class um, right someone uh, Arkney just met um, uh, just met someone to get a uh like an audience with the god uh via voluntary sacrifice um oh which god was it i think it is uh elal yes elal uh yep and then and then basically burned down a house fun uh yeah 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 that's 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 where we ended um this is book two it's also like where the plot just starts to thicken and stuff and it's been really good um this is book two book chapter one so gonna start you can do this to us it's murder He'll drop us all down a well or something. There have to be laws about this kind of thing. Don't you have a bleeding heart, woman? Children! Professor Tolerance shouted in ex ex exasperation. You've been here nearly a month. You were told on the first day that you'd be grinded primarily on fieldwork. This expedition has been scheduled for two weeks. The announcement of the professor leading it went out five days ago. Honestly, if you want to put up a fuss about things that aren't going to change, that's your lookout. But just now? She shot them uh, an irritated look over her shoulder. I have no tolerance for procrastination. Yikes. Uh, <laughs> too often? Too often have I been on this kind of thing? Uh, whoops. Tellerin stepped off the staircase, cutting diagonally across the grass, about three-fourths of the way down the mountain, with the girls of the clock uh, tower trailing along behind her. Ruda, Teal, and Frost kept right on her heels, exchanging glances and gearing up for an another round of complaints. The others followed a bit more sedately. Everyone was carrying a well-stuffed backpack, and not everyone was fully awake yet. Most of them weren't used to being up before the sun. How do I... I need to bring up chat. K. 
Okay. I now have chat on another f screen so I can see things. It's one thing to know it's coming. It's one thing to know something. Wait, what? Everyone was carrying a well stuffed backpack and not everyone was fully awake yet. Most of them weren't used to being up before the sun. It's one thing to know something's coming, Ruda ventured at last. This is last minute panic. As in, holy shit, they're actually gonna send us out into the goddamn wilderness with an idiot from another dimension as a tour guide. Telrin actually laughed at her, not turning around, and lengthened her stride. The line stretched out as the girls made varying degrees of effort to keep up. They remained mostly quiet, though, for the rest of the trip down. The professor had cut a path that avoided the town, depositing them at the base of the mountain beyond its edges. The boys and the guide and their guide were already there waiting for them. Toby smiled and waved. Gabriel appeared to be asleep standing up. Upon their approach, Professor Raffi turned and threw out his arms as though offering the world a hug, beaming delightedly. Behold We're gonna fucking die, Ruda said. Ten points, Punaji, he crowed, pumping a fist in the air. But pace yourself, and remember, people do have feelings. We, she repeated, are going to fucking die. Yup, said Gabe. Can we just do that now and save ourselves a hike? Alright, enough, uh, Torrance said fatly. Admestus, go wait up ahead. Aw, oh, but I was gonna make a speech. You can speech while like, well, 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 you can speech while walking. Go. He turned and trudged away, shoulders slumped, an exaggerated pantomime of dejection. Naturally, this, this, this did not set a very fast pace. Now, Torrin shouted. He shuffled faster, taking off at a near run, still with his arms hanging limply, and head down. Are you seeing the problem here? said Ruda. He has no respect for rules, Frost uttered shrilly. Not even basic standards of civilized behavior. I don't think he even knows how to... Enough, Torrin said flatly. With enough force they all, that they all fell silent. She tilted her head, down, staring at them over the rims of her spectacles. Admestus Raffae has created a limited anti-death potion. There was a moment's silence. That's impossible, Ruda finally scoffed. Wait, anti-death? Gabriel paused to yawn, scratching his head. Isn't that just, you know, medicine? Miss Punaji, you seem to have done some out of class reading, said Tellering. Care to take this one? <coughs> Ruda scowled at her, but answered grudgingly. Medicines are made to treat specific problems. An anti death potion is just that, it prevents death. If you take one, anything that would cause death just doesn't affect you. Hi, Daddy Ray. Huh, Gabe said, then blinked owlishly. Wait, how does that even work? Sure, good night, have a good night's sleep. It fucking doesn't, Ruda exclaimed. It's like eight different kinds of tautology tautologically impossible. It's a myth, like the Philosopher's Stone. Actually, Philosopher's Stones are real, said Professor Telrin, but the Empire tends to disappear people who have them, since manufacturing gold on any significant scale would implode the economy overnight. It's only 3.30am? You definitely need to go to bed, what the fuck? <laughs> Why are you up? Go, 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 go. But back to the topic at hand. Yes, anti-death potions are quite impossible. They violate several physical and magical laws. And yes, Admestus Raffae has created one. She let that sink in for a moment, panning her gaze around them. Coding the bot? Which one? Is it for the... Um, uh, what's, what's it called? Is it for the Pokey... Pokemon thing?
Or is it just another bot that I do not know anything about? Because that's also very likely. <laughs> Several of the assembled freshmen still barely looked awake. But they were all quiet now and paying attention. Your professors at this university were offered employment here because they are the best living practitioners of whatever art they teach, she went on at last. They were not selected for their academic qualifications. She glanced over at Rafi, who was now st standing on his head, <laughs> facing out at the Golden Sea. Or social skills. The exception being Professor Yarnhall who is one of the greatest teaching majors alive. But honestly, I hired him to be a calming influence on this place. <clears throat> Regardless, before you start getting uppity, be aware of who you're dealing with and why they deserve some respect. Well, that's all well and good, said Frost. I mean, he's good at alchemy. That's very impressive. But we're not doing alchemy on this trip unless someone gave me the wrong assignment parameters. Which I'm going to be really mad if that's true because that's a mean thing to do to someone. We're basically doing wilderness survival with miscellaneous other tasks. And maybe someone who's good with alchemy and doesn't have the most basic social skills isn't the best choice for keeping eight students alive in the depths of a huge, endless magical prayer? Parry? Par Priory? Ah, but that's not his job, Tolerin replied, holding up one finger. It's yours. This is something of a dry year. Ordinarily, I have a much bigger freshman class to deal with. However, even just the eight of you are a force to contend with. You've heard a lot about the dangers of the Golden Sea, and what you've heard was not exaggerated. But keep it firmly in mind that as long as you don't fall to backstabbing each other, you rank high among those dangers. Follow Juniper's lead on outdoor survival issues and Trissini's in a combat situation. Let Shane and Toby handle any negotiations you need to do. You'll be fine. And the rest of us are what? Chopped liver? Ruda asked sorely. Telrin grinned at her. You each have a valuable role to play, as anyone can attest who's tried to play a game of chess without pawns. Oh, fuck you. Well, Professor Rafe does have some friends and contacts out in the Golden Sea which may prove useful to you, all that is secondary. Telrin lays her, hands together, her fingers together in front of her stomach, looking smug. He is there to watch you, not watch over you and report back on your performance pertaining to the core classes in which you'll be given credit for this outing. This outing. History, combat, magic, and herbalism. In short, you're going out there to deal with people, fight things, contend with local magic forces, and make use of native plants. Your assignment, kids, is to have an adventure. That's just idiotic. Gabriel groused. This is the 12th century. Nobody does that anymore. I kind of want to, Juniper piped up. It sounds like fun. In a sense, yes. A journey into the Golden Sea is a journey into the past, said Telrin. You're accustomed to living in a settled, civilized world, world full of moral laws and the institutions that enforce them. Um, excuse me, but except Juniper and Frost, Tolerin amended. The point is, the Golden Sea is a patch of land where such things have never taken hold, and likely never will nor can. Testing yourself in such a state of existence will give you a first-hand idea what life was like for your ancestors. More to the point, it will give you the opportunity to strengthen and harden yourself as they had merely to survive. There is a trade-off, students, for living in a comfortable world of systems. You gain numerous assets and advantages from being part of, a, of an advanced society, but you are denied the opportunity to develop the toughness and inventiveness that people in less fortunate societies must. I intend to see that you go out into the world with advantages of both. 
I'm setting you up to win at life, kids. Kindly stop bitching t at me about it. I rather wish you wouldn't use that word. I'll give it a rest, Trisini. Tarun sighed. Anyhow, we're done here. Here's your guide. The skinny man now doing cartwheels in the grass. And there's the golden sea. Off with you, try not to get killed. Don't stab each other in the back. I'll be up here enjoying some peace and goddamn quiet. Does she know there are other students on this campus? Gabriel asked as Tarun turned to go. Shh, said Ruda grinning. She's making a dramatic exit. Respect the exit, man. Oh my god, we have had one other person put in the thing. I, I don't know if we can win this. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can. Rafi must have heard them approaching, assuming those years of his were merely decoration, decorative. But he didn't turn around until the eight freshmen came to a stop right behind him, several dropping their backpacks into the grass. He stood silently, staring out into the golden sea. We live in fish bowls, the alchemy professor intoned quietly. A soft wind blew across the prairie making his golden hair shimmer along with the waves of tall grass, both gleaming in the orange light of a new sunrise. Our lives are ordered, structured, safe. We are fed, provided for, housed, and in return, our labors go to sustain the grand machine of civilization. It makes us healthier in some ways, stronger, more secure, but we forget sometimes just who and what we are. And so, my children, we embark on this voyage into the great beyond, into the last of the wilds, where there will be no one to catch us where we fall. We will live as animals, as savages. We will live, I say unto you. He slowly raised both arms from his sides, extending them fully as if to embrace the prairie itself and drew him a and drew in a deep breath. Behold! shouted nine voices in unison. Rafi turned around to face them, grinning broadly. See, this is why I love you guys. You get me. You're not that complicated, man, said Gabriel. Alright, kids, the professor said, suddenly brisk in all business. Grab onto your satchels and your asses. We are out of here. Let's go grub around in some dirt. Onward to glory! He took off at a run into the prayer, not even turning to see if they followed. Yup, Ruda said fatalistically. Everybody remember that I called it. We're going to fucking die. <coughs> oh my god. Reading this? My throat? Yeah. Like it, it, it live, but not that, not, not, not very long. <gasps> we got more tanks and a warrior. Okay, I think we can do this now. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We can start this early, but we only got six minutes left, so we'll just wait. Oh, which reminds me, I just realized you guys can't see that. Uh. Uh, if I go to this scene and I copy this, and I come back here and I paste, yes, okay. I can move you, probably gonna make you smaller. Put you like right there. Yeah, that's, that's small enough. You can kind of see what's going on. This is the main battle, really. Yeah. Spells will be available when the battle is ready. Yeah, that's, that's a bit more from now, isn't it? Yeah, it's still five minutes. 
Oh wait, I can do I can move this in like that and then Oh e chat. Why can't I move chat? Oh that's fine, whatever. <coughs> As if to prove that nature itself bore him a grudge, vast improbabilities aligned such that neither the regions in Terminable rains, nor the discharges of the city's magical factories blotted out the sky on the morning that, a little after seven, Bishop Darling's bedroom drapes were flung open. Brilliant, hateful sunlight burst in upon his peace like a stampede of buffalo. Oh, I got 70%, I don't need charges. Uh. He roared, coming awake in the most unpleasant manner he could remember. Sleep, adult, Darling tried to throw off his blankets with one hand, while pulling them over his head with the other, succeeding brilliantly in entangling himself. Price! What in the fell hell are you doing? Good morning, Your Grace, his butler said crisply, stepping away from the windows and beginning to swiftly lay out a suit from his wardrobe. What bloody time is it? Nearly two hours b before your grace's customary breakfast. You have a visitor. I took the liberty of installing her in the downstairs parlor. Visitor. Ugh. The world was, the word was mangled by an enormous yawn. But at least he finally managed to extract, extricate himself from his blankets. She? Who in Omnus' flaming name would be daft enough to barge in here at this hour? One of the young talents at the Pink Lee, a Miss Rose. She blinked, then frowned. What? Rose knows how to get in touch with me. There are channels, procedures. She also knows damn well better than to show up here. Indeed, your grace has spoken positively of her wits and discretion. The young lady appears quite distraught. I gathered that the circumstances must be exceptional, and took the liberty of awakening your grace lest the matter should require immediate attention. Right, he said, shook his head to clear away the flog of sleep, then repeated more firmly, right. Good thinking, Price. I'll dress, you brush. Very good, your grace. He tossed aside his silk pyjamas and stuffed himself into one of Sweet's better suits, an only slightly shabby outfit in royal blue and maroon. Price darted about him like an efficient hummingbird, sorting his sleep-tussled hair into a semblance of proper order. Shoes, he asked, looking around for them as they finished this joint task. Price handed him a pair of slippers. Really? Laces are a relatively time-consuming prospect, your grace. Perhaps we ought not to leave the young lady to wait too long. Darling rolled his eyes but dropped the slippers to the ground and stepped into them. She's not going to steal anything, Price. The girl's not an idiot. As you say, Your Grace, you're such a snob, you know that? Rubbing the last traces of sleep from his eyes, he strode towards the door. As you say, Your Grace. Price managed to barge in, in front of to barge in front of him definitely. Really? Butler training was astounding. And by the time he had reached the bottom of the stairs, was in position to open the door of the downstairs parlour for him with a bow. It was the less impressive of the rooms in which he entertained his guests. But only Bishop Darling's guests were entertained here. Sweet went to where the people were, rather than bringing them to him. As such, the room's thick carpet, ornate wallpaper, expensive furniture, an assortment of art and knickknacks made it probably the most pompous, probably the most sumptuous room this guest had ever visited. She was standing with her back to the door, studying a silver idol of his of Assyrian, 
that stood over the mantel, which was about two feet above her head, treating him to a view of pleasantly plump backside and a upper back left, almost entirely bare by the uniform of a train. Gods above, had she come in the front door? They'd be hell to pay with the neighbors. Rose jumped like a startled bird on his a rabbit on his arrival, though, spinning to face him, and he felt a twin twinge of alarm. She was ordinarily one of the most unfappable people he knew. She had to be in her line of work. Oh, ready to begin. Oh, cancel. Uh, let's put. Yeah, let's put stronghold. Start battle. Uh, let's really quickly switch to this. Oh, you can't even go in there. Wow, I wasted. Oh, maybe. Maybe not. That rogue really helped. Not gonna lie. <laughs> eh. <coughs> um, let's go up. No, let's go down. Kill three melee units. Uh, I guess my best option for that would be a archer. Alright. Now we wait. If you would like to put in your units, either exclamation or battle, or you can just click on the link that just appeared in chat. Um, wrong scene. Back to back the book. Back to book. It grew worse as he took in the sight of her face. Tears had melted her makeup into a hideous mudslide and apparently hadn't stopped flowing. She looked... It was hard to pin a name to the emotion ground into her features, but it was clearly something on the ragged edge of trauma. Sweet, she cried desperately, taking a stumbling step toward him. I'm sorry, I know I shouldn't come. I'm sorry, but I, I, I didn't know what to do. She's dead. It's, it's such a mess. Oh, light. She's dead. It, it was just awful. I never saw anything like, I never imagined, and there's polis and imps all over, and the girls are all a wreck and light. I hated to leave them, but I didn't know what to do, and you're the only one I could think of. Rose, he crossed the room in three long strides, and knelt to take her gently by the shoulders, holding her gaze with his own. In ordinary circumstances, it was one of the worst possible things you could do with a dwarf, shot of pissing in their beer. They tended to take poorly to being reminded of any difference in stature. Rose, though, was clearly on the edge of an utter breakdown. She collapsed against him, dissolving in sobs, and he rocked her gently, heedless of what the mix of mascara and snot was inevitably doing to his suit. It's okay, doll. You're safe right now. I need you to stiffen up for just a bit, though, alright? We gotta figure out what to do, and I can't help you if I don't know what's up. Price, fetch us some brandy? Immediately, sir. Gently, he eased her back. Can you hold on for just a little bit longer for me, love? I know you can. You're the strongest person I've ever met. She nodded, gulped, and gasped for air, choking back another sob. 
That's my girl. Now start at the beginning. Tell it slow. What happened? Who's dead? Rose gulped again and drew in a shuddering breath, staring up into his eyes. It's Missy, sweet. She... It was murder. They butchered her. Ah, oh, my nose. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, we still got only one unit. Uh, please, exclamation my battle. If you want to put in units, it, it, please do. Uh... We got a couple melee and uh, one archer right now on the opposing side. So rogues probably around here. Oh, you can't see where I'm pointing. Let me just casually put me in front me. Rogue, 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 rogue. Rogues about where I put those markers. Uh, anything else for the melee is fine. Uh -huh. He was the first one off the coach when it rolled to a stop, but held the door open for the other passengers politely. Eager as he was to get the hell out of that hot, dusty, rattletrap prison, good manners were important. Without them, a body was likely to piss off the wrong people and alienate all the others. No way to do business. The man in the cheap suit smiled politely politely at expressions of thanks from the old army officer and the aging lady in the severe grey dress and then much more warmly at her young charge. He didn't quite dare go any further though, though she was a lovely little piece and had been shooting him increasing, increasingly daring grins all through yesterday. Poor girl was too sleep struck to carry on their silent flirtation now. He was the only one who had an managed to nod off during the overnight drive. Ah, well, nothing would have come of it anyway, though he did treat himself to a long appraisal of her air as, he, as she collected her luggage and made her way into town. His own suitcase was the last to be handed down. The, discus, the discourtesy of it rankled, even as it suited his purpose. He wanted to pause here and get a good look at last rock before getting down to work. Oh, it's this fuck. <laughs> oh, I forgot how fucking weird this fuck is. A wooden footbridge arced over the rail line from the coach stop, which was the only thing on this side of the line from the town itself. This was where the road was, and for some damn fool reason, the Imperial Survey had decided the rail was of more import to the town than the means of transportation favoured by honest folk since time immemorial. Not that he was honest folk by any means, but it was the principle of the thing. He could have made this journey in minutes rather than days had he taken the rail, but he had ridden that damnable contraption once before, and it had been plenty. How anybody got out of it without broken bones was mystery to him. He accepted his suitcase from the driver with a curt nod and turned away, noting the man's clenched jaw at the lack of a tip and not caring. The guy would be on the road again soon and he'd never see him again, so why waste the effort or the copper? Plenty of growth would be needed in the town in the days to come. Settling his hat over his slicked back hair, he set off for the footbridge. The mountain was an awe-inspiring sight, especially with the university clinging to its peak, though he couldn't see that as well from this close up what with the angle of the mount itself. Still, the university wasn't his business, at least not directly. His firm orders were to stay the hell away from it. Crossing the bridge, he made his way right for the first tavern he saw, a place with a sign proclaiming it the Ale and Wenches. It sounded like his kind of spot. Inside, the a and was asleep as all reasonable taverns were at not nearly long enough after sunrise. A groggy looking boy was busy sweeping up the floor and raised his head to blink it stupidly at him as he entered. Morning, said the man politely, tipping his hat. No telling who this kid was or who he knew. No use getting off on the wrong foot, 
though the big guy knew the little shit looked like he didn't have two brain cells to rub together. I'm looking for a place to stay for a spell. Got any rooms left? Uh, the kid blinked and stared at him, and the man repressed a spike of ag aggravation. Really? This was no worse than he'd expected from this little carpet of town on the very edge of nowhere. Uh, rooms or a silver piece a night or fire for the week. And uh, I'll need a name. Jeremiah shook, he said, still polite, despite the rising urge to slap some of the stupidity of, out of the boy. And if it is not too much trouble, maybe you can help me find a friend of mine I'm looking for. Heard she was so settled around these parts. Name's Principia? At that, the kid straightened up, suddenly a lot more alert. You know Pren? Oh, he wasn't just alert, he was alarmed. Thumper permitted himself the luxury of an honest Garen, not caring how it seemed to unsettle his new acquaintance. This was the place, alright. Maybe, just maybe, he'd be able to have a little fun with his job after all. Ah. Sorry, give me a second. My nose. Ah. If anyone can, if anybody's listening, uh, please put down people for what you call it. Big bark, big bark. We have a big bark. These are not meal units, huh? Now this is that support. Well, either way, I would like some units for um, so we don't die. <laughs> this guy isn't gonna survive. He's got what thirty HP. This has got two, but man's gonna come speeding at me, and I can't hit him. Probably, yeah. This ain't gonna go well. Oh well. Really quickly, let's go to store. I've got four hours. Okay. Exclamation mark battle if you want to get into the battle. Eh. Within the town, only the scroll tower was taller than the church steeple. As such, Principe was the first person to experience the sunrise. It illuminated her and her perch from the east. Warm orange light causing the crystalline coating of the ank on top of the structure to burst into radiant life, then sliding progressively down the steeple, doing interesting things to the subtle highlights in her black hair. Even looking north as she was, it would have been half blinding to a human. Her eyes, of course, had no trouble. She leaned back against the sloping wooden obelisk, arms folded across her chest heels resting on the tiny lip at the base of the steeple. Wind blew errant locks of her hair loose from the tight ponytail into which she pulled it, but she ignored this. It wasn't strong enough to affect her balance. The elf watched, face intent, as a small column of people set out from the base of the mountain, heading into the Golden Sea. They weren't setting much of a pace. It took hours for them to vanish vanish over the horizon. Still, she stood there, motionless as a gargoyle, as the wind faded, the day heated, 
Dew turned to steam, and the ruddy glow of sun sh sunrise turned into a steadily hot glare of day. Not until this town had come fully alive did she finally move. Even her elven eyes could no longer see the students. Principal leaned her head back, looking momentarily up into the bright blue sky, and sighed softly. Keep her safe, just for a while longer, please? She kicked herself carelessly forward, dropping down to the sloping roof of the church, slid down its shingles on her heels, and plummeted to the alley below, where she landed as silently and gracefully as a cat. Whistling, she strolled off down the street, reading, returning gr greetings from her fellow townsfolk with her customary, customary insouance. Insouance? First word! Insouciance. Insouciance. With her customary insouciance. Just a pretty wom young woman without a care in the world. What is it? He asked as the younger woman, as the younger man abruptly straightened. Thought I saw something. What? I don't. Nothing. It's nothing. It's just a flicker. I must have been imagining it. The sergeant grunted. Write up report. Private car stairs. <laughs> car stairs. Private car stairs cringed. Ah, oh, for, sir, there's nothing to write. It was nothing. You saw something. I saw you see it. Write the goddamn report, son. But I wouldn't know what to write. It was just a flicker out the corner of my eye. Just probably my lack of sleep. He fell silent as the sergeant rounded on him, clenching his jaw. I'm hearing a lot of wah-wah boo-boo and not nearly enough yes sir, private. Do you know what that fucking thing is? He pointed at the object of their surveillance. That is a fucking hell gate. If you saw a flicker of movement, you write a fucking report. If you get a mysterious itch on your ass while looking in its general direction, you write a fucking report. Incom gets a report whenever a titmouse so much as farts on this site, you understand? They will decide what is and is not significant, and they'll know what to do, what to decide between. Sorry, and they'll know what to decide between because for every report, because for every event, there's a God but fucking damn report. Just as soon as Lord Vex starts to give a bloody shit or you think about anything, he'll come down here and give you your promotion. Until that time, son, you will write your reports and you will never ever require a superior officer to repeat himself on giving you an order. Am I inescapably clear? So yes, sir, Costas shouted, saluting, and scrambled for the pad of eight incident forms in its waterproof box affixed to one of the walls of the watchtower. He fumbled out his pen and bent over the railing, scribbling furiously while the sergeant turned with a grunt to glare at the apparently empty stone platform the tower overlooked. Watch that pen mention, Private. Yes, sir! And when your shift is over, report to the latrine. I'll be along in an hour to inspect it. And if I find it in a lesser state of cleanliness than that which is suitable to serve tea to the Empress upon, I'll redo it myself using your goddamn face. Understood? Yes, sir. I hear a distressing lack of enthusiasm, Private. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Below them, Elal had paused in strolling past the watchtower to listen in on this exchange and laughed delightedly. Tilting her head back, she blew a kiss up at the tower, before continuing on her way into the heart of Imperial territory. Her hooves left no mark on the ground, and the soldiers, of course, neither saw nor heard her. But the crystal's crying orbs on each corner of the tower did. Ooh, hello, Tonesy, how you doing? <coughs> My throat's dying, dude. I don't think I'm fully recovered. Um, this was book uh, two. Uh, sorry. Yes, book two. Chapter one of uh, TGAV.
we will start chapter 2 shortly <coughs> but let me just get more water because I'm dying uh -huh. I'll be right back uh, if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna join in on the stream raiders because I need help uh, yeah please help uh, oh wait I need to copy paste this There we go, and I'll go get water. Be right back. Hello, I'm back. Hi, Donzi, how you doing? How how long did I miss your message? <laughs> we have seven minutes left. I'm not gonna get past this battle if anyone doesn't put any units in. This is not going to work out. <coughs> Tonesy? To Tonesy? Uh, I think 
I'm gonna wait out the seven minutes on this screen. Or maybe you go to maybe you go to just chatting, there we go. Oh oh someone just put down a rogue, thank you. Q Q T Q Q Q L T Q Q E T Q Thank you for the rogue. Oh but yeah we are gonna wait out this um six or so minutes and then we get back to the book this is gonna suck they do 40 damage That that fourteen, bruh. Never mind, I don't think we're gonna live. <laughs> This isn't gonna go well. <clears throat> anyway, um, for the book itself, uh, we are at a point that I actually find very fun. Um, the guy who we just saw appear again, uh, which is what Shook. Sorry, Jeremiah Shook, or also known as Tampa. He's a dick. He's the biggest dick. Um, I just. I would like to preface that his entire character is a dick. He does get a little bit better, um, but not by a lot. Not really. <laughs> uh, he does get better, though. I, I won't. I won't. I won't deny that. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, this dude is definitely something. Definitely a pain in the ass. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I'm curious. Because uh, he's he's a bit of like a sexist motherfucker. Um, he doesn't believe in 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 things, and it's weird. Like genuinely, he's like not a gender. He's like, oh, girls will, girls will fuck the world up and whatever. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty sus. Well, she actually just started early. There's no point. In... Ah, okay, I'm done. But I don't know he's 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 a piece of work. But his characterization uh, and the way it's done and the way it's like portrayed and stuff make him very very unlikable. Yeah, but it's done so well that it's good. Um, I like that. And uh, once again, I am reading Tika because I really am in love with the story, and I'm in love with the story because it's a good fucking book. It's a good story and. While yes, uh, it's not complete, and while yes, Web is uh, someday gonna complete it, but not. Um, it is on hiatus right now. But even then, I still, I still want people to read it because it's good shit, dude. And if you get a chance to read it, it's 
worth it. I, 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 I think it's worth it. It's worth it. Um, if you want to read it for yourself, DGB. If you want to listen to me read it, uh, the previous book and all chapters of that book are on my YouTube, which you can find with oh <coughs> Um Yeah. Yeah. Not much not much else to this really. <gasps> We're starting to get people in for this last like minute. Hot noise. How'd they find me? I don't know, no clue. Oh this is this is good. That's the highest level we have on this even higher level than my archer. <laughs> We've got 38 seconds if you want to put in your your last little um, unit exclamation mark battle to get the link please put it in we've got like 20 seconds I have no idea what stream delay is on but It shouldn't be on much because I, I know I turned it off for most things, but eh, it still annoys me every time. Five seconds, people. Oh, three seconds, people. I was so wrong. It's time. It's, it's, it's time. Let's put haste on that group. Like there. <coughs> and start battle. Oh, sorry. Well, I bleh, bleh. I keep forgetting to do that one. Not surprised at all. Although I am surprised that I lived this long to get into this. Okay, if if, if uh, maybe not. How much? Two hundred and seventy-five. Nah, we had we dead. Yep. And they and they evolved as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can try that again. This is the easier route. <laughs> uh, I need to kill melee, so let's go with a bummer and let's go down a bit. Uh, we can do that, and then we can go back to reading. That's the wrong screen. There we go. <coughs> Alright, so this is chapter 2 of book 2. Uh, I think I'll be done after this chapter. We might have a short stream later on tonight for... I don't know, I'll, I'll see if I can try and get a game running again. Maybe heat signature, um, but yeah, it's mainly going to be a testing type stream. Oh yeah, that's that was because I, 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 I put down units. Yes, uh, caption should be working. That's mod DC stat. We have a next ad in twenty three minute. Okay. <coughs> It quickly became apparent which one of them were accustomed to hiking, and which were not. Very rapidly, the sun climbed, the air heated, and the more indoorsy of the students began to struggle with the erratic pace Professor Rafe had set as he darted back and forth, picking plants and usually shouting gleefully about them. Juniper, likewise, would sometimes rush away to investigate something growing, but little did they found made much of an impression on the other students. The Golden Sea was a featureless plain, stretching in all directions, with not so much as a shrub to break the shimmering monotony. The variety of grasses to be found was limited and of a, 
of interest only to the resident herbalist in Dryad. For the most part, the rest of the freshman class were preoccupied with the heat in the aching legs. <laughs> Just about when the sun had risen high enough to banish the colors of dawn and turn the sky crystal blue, they came to a sudden halt when uh, Gabriel ye- let out a yelp. The mountain! he shouted, facing back the way they came. It's gone! Nonsense. It's right where we left it, Professor Rafe said easily. We're gone? What? I know we're gone, but we've barely been walking an hour. That mountain is freaking huge. We should still be able to see it from here. Oh, you worry too much, Rafe said, grinning easily. Like you said, it's huge. I'm sure we'll find it again when we need it. For now, further up and further in. Are you nuts? Ruda shouted. The golden sea shifts around and changes. Everybody knows that. We've been shunted off to fuck knows where. How the hell are we going to get back? I'm sure something will turn up, the professor said breezily, turning back around and strolling off. Come on, that's why it's called an adventure. (coughs) Get into the spirit, Panaji. Now, keep a lookout for anything in... (coughs) Now, keep a lookout for any interesting geographical features, kids. We'll want to stop pretty soon to rest our legs and have some breakfast. Sitting down and standing tall grass is kind of a pain, much less making a fire. I knew it! Ruda pointed at him, turning around to glare at the others. I fucking called it! The Moors let us out here to die. Then we shall die as heroes, Ruffet bellowed, already ten yards distant. Onward to glory! Shut the fuck up, you asshole! If I may, Shane raised her voice only slightly, but it was sufficiently out of a normal character that both Ruda and Gabe stopped and turned to look at her. Do you recall Professor Tellrin saying in our first class that there's a gears upon the university that prevented outsiders from knowing its true name? Yeah, what of it? There's more to it than that. Initiates of the Unseen University can always find it from the Golden Sea. The general rule of navigating the sea is that going uphill leads one further in, while going downhill leads towards the edges. (sighs) Wait, there's a hill? Gribble looked around, then lifted one of his feet and checked under it, as if expecting to find a squashed hill beneath his foot. Oh, thank you for the epic artillery. That'll help. That'll help a lot. That'll help so much. Oh, that's good help. I wonder if we could start early. You know, I'll wait till there's like one more person and then I'll start. The incline is slight, but it is noticeable, said Trissini. Look to the east or west. Moving laterally is effectively random, Shane went on, in terms of where the sea will put you. For most people, exiting the region may mean departing at any point at its circumference, but we will always come back to Last Rock. Oh, okay. Ruda let out a breath slowly. That would have been nice to know a little earlier. Yup, said Rafi cheerily, coming back to join them. And since our resident Pixie is clearly an ice elemental and not an exposition fairy, excuse me, but those are a myth, Frost interjected. <clears throat> you can assume that Shane came by her knowledge the old fashioned way, by braving the wrath of, Miss- of Grumpy Pants Mac Ponytail to access the library, which you could also have done had you been asked to do the slightest of prep work before swagging off into one of the most one of the world's most dangerous wildernesses. This is what we in the biz call a teaching moment. He grinned, pointing a finger at Ruda and pantomime squeezing a clicker with his thumb. Zap! You're dead. Up yours, Twinkletoes. Wait, who's Grumpy Pants McPonytail? Frost asked. The librarian, said Gabriel. I... Wait, what? 
The librarian's name is Weaver. I'm positive it is. I pay close attention to him. He said he was going to put me in a ball and use me as a lamp if I got frost in the books. Grumpy Pants is his nickname, Rafe said solemnly. A hard-earned moniker that gives due credence to his vast contributions to the field of being grumpy. Oh, Frost buzzed around in a circle a couple times. Should, should I call him that? Yes, chorus Rafe, Gabe, and Ruda, wearing identical grins. No, Tristany said firmly, dividing a hard look amongst the three. Don't make fun of her. How would you like it if someone set you up for that kind of rude awakening? Oh, pish posh, Rafi said cheerily. How do you think Arkney welcomed me to the staff? I am so confused, said Frost. Toby cleared his throat loudly. Since we have stopped anyway, how does breakfast sound to anyone else? Remember what I was just what I was saying just now about camping in the tall grass, Rafi said condescendingly. We can do that if you really want, but honestly, it's a recipe for getting really itchy even before the bugs start cl climbing up your clothes. Bugs? Grable squawked, jumping to the side and looking down under his feet again. I remember, thanks, Toby said patiently, then pointed off to the group's right. How's that? Visible over the shoulder high grass about 30 yards away was a flat topped outcropping of stone. Its surface was irregular and slightly angled, but looked large enough to hold them all comfortably and more besides. It had definitely not been there a moment ago. Aha! Griffith, Rafi crowd. Brilliant! Good eye, Mr. Kane! Your quick thinking has saved us all a ra raging case of ass grass. <laughs> Onward to breakfast! He charged off toward the rocks, flailing with both arms to push tall grass out of his way. I still say we're gonna. Oh, give it a rest, Ruda. Tristan said sharply and stalked off after Rafi. The pirate lifted her head to scratch at her head, spring quizzically after her roommate. What's with her? Don't know, said Gabe, following the paladin. Don't care. I'm gonna go sit down. <coughs> the lowest end of the flat rock was about chest high and had a convenient pile of tumbled stones on one side that enabled them to scramble up without difficulty. Rafi com commented, as he set up a fire, that this boulder was probably a piece of the same mountain on which the university sat, hurled into the Golden Sea millennia ago by the explosion that had half sunk the plateau. His pupils were mostly disinterested. Only Gabriel was paying him any attention. And that was not to anything Rafe was saying, but to the fire he had set up by liberally coating a handful of tall grass stalks in oil from a vial he had taken from his belt. They burned as hot and steadily as a stack of wood. Rafe sang off key in Elvish as he fried bacon and eggs. He and his cook fire were set up on the tallest part of the rock. Uh, give me a minute, guys. Apologies, my mom just walked in. It's also why the door is open. <clears throat> he and his cook fire were set up on the tallest part of the rock, and also the only completely flat one. The eight students sat in small clumps along the long, downward sloping surface, positioned mostly facing west to keep the sun out of their eyes. Even without being blinded, there was no escaping the heat. None of them wanted to be anywhere near the fire. Aren't you hot under all that? Teal said, sitting down behind, beside Shane, who, as usual, when outdoors, kept her foot well up. 
I thought Professor Ralph gave you sun oil for your skin. He did. I don't like to complain, the door demurred. The heat I can suffer. Without the shade of my hood, I'm afraid my eyesight is rather poor in this level of illumination. At home, I thought being out in the sun would be like walking in the agricultural caverns with their sun, sun crystals. I'm afraid they do not do justice to the real thing. Teal nodded, a smile tugging at her lips. So, aren't you hot under all that? Shane shifted slightly. Extremely, yes. Oh, the bard sat bolt upright, then clapped her hand to her face. Oh, damn it. I'm sorry. I meant to do this before we set up, but I overslept. And then it went right, just, then it just went right out of my head. Hang on. Pulling over her backpack. She prized one of its smaller compartments open and withdrew an oblong leather case. Here, I got this for you in town. In town, it was going to be a surprise. Just <clears throat> a more timely one. Sorry about that. Shane took the little glass carefully and flicked it open with the thumbs. Inside nestled a pair of rectangular eyeglasses made of smoky black glass. I actually completely forgot about this. Huh, interesting. They're enchanted, Teal said a little nervously. Should protect your eyes from the glare, even though they won't cover your whole face, obviously. It seems to work for Nachua. I thought the rimless ones were more your style, though. Oh, and the rubber coatings for the earpieces are detachable, so I got the ones in dark red and green. Awarian colors, right? Gingerly, Shane unfolded the glasses and slipped them on into the depths of her hood. After a moment's adjusting, she lowered the cowl of her robe, revealing her face. Her hair glowed under the full sunlight. The dark glasses made her look oddly rakish, in contrast to her serene demeanor. Thank you, Teal, she said softly. This was extremely thoughtful. Teal grinned delightedly. You like him? I do, very much, she smiled in return. An expression that was just as perceptible hair warmer than her usual smile. Than her usual polite smile. After a moment, Teal cleared her throat and glanced away, brightening her lower lip. <coughs> <coughs> well, it'll at least help out here. Honestly, I don't know how you've been managing in Azaniel's class. With my eyes narrowed to slits, actually. It's less than optimal, but allows me to preserve some vision at least. And I'm accustomed to using other senses to compensate. Wait, wait, hold up, said Ruda from a few feet away, craning her neck to look around Teal at the draw. Are you telling me that on our first class, you fought me to a draw you with your eyes closed? Not closed, Shane clarified. Narrowed. The pirate groaned and collapsed backward onto the sword, onto the rock. My humiliation is complete. I should give Papa back the sword and become a fisherwoman. Or, Shane said gently, apply yourself in Professor Isaniel's class and return home a wa better warrior than you left. No, no, Uda placed her hat over her face and waved her hand dismissively. It's all over. I'll just lie here and wait for decomposition. Clearly, I did not even deserve a proper burial at sea. Now, help me out here, because I can't always tell, Gabriel said, grinning. Is this ironic self-pity, or do you actually need your diaper changed? Arkwing, if my legs weren't so fucking sore, one of them would be halfway up your ass right now. Whoa, girl, let's save that for the third date, he said, grinning, then barreled on before she could reply. I like your vest, by the way. I don't think I've seen you in that before. Is it armor? Under her long coat, Ruda wore a tight midriff bearing vest of sturdy leather, embroidered sparingly with blue thread to offset its obviously Altarian design. Yeah, she said, without looking out from under her head. It's armored. Well, I should point out that it leaves your tummy exposed. You know, the part that has all your vital organs? 
just because you can point something out doesn't mean you should, Gabe, Toby remarked. Well, what can I say, Ruda said. Ruda shrugged. I'm a creature of style. I'll be the swankiest disemboweled, disemboweled crops in the room. In the group. Oh, don't listen to her, Juniper said cheerfully. She's just funning you again. That's for support. June, Ruda said, a w- note of warning in her voice. Gerbil blinked and cocked his head. Support? Yeah, the dryer bubbled on. We're going to be doing a lot of physical activity on this trip, probably, and Ruda's pretty brusty. Best actu- breasts actually get really uncomfortable if you just let them bounce around. Like, even painful for the bigger ones. They're just glandul- glandular tissue and a coating of fat with a lot of nerve endings, so they t- need some artificial structure to avoid getting hurt. Really? Gabriel said, grinning broadly. Across from him, Toby sighed. Juniper? Gruda said more firmly, sitting up and adjusting her head. Yep, Juniper went on blithely. Well, not mine, of course, but I don't really have the same kind of nervous system you guys do. Also, my internal structure is more... Well, that's kind of off topic. She's probably fine with a good brassiere most of the time, but when we're going to be out... Juniper! Ruda said f- f- sharply, finally getting the dryad's attention. Hmm? Remember when you asked me to warn you when you were talking about things that aren't for polite company? Uh, yes? The pirate stared at her evenly. Juniper gazed back, non pulsed. What about it? I think she means the, you're doing that now, Frost piped up. What? I. Wait, really? Juniper frowned. You don't talk about breasts in public? Not as a rule, no. But that's just crazy, she protested. Boys love breasts, even the gay ones. Girls too, everyone, just about. It's pretty much a universal positive. Everybody can gather together and bond over breasts. Nobody doesn't like them. She speaks wisdom, Gabriel proclaimed, his grin having reached almost roughly like proportions. This is a profound revelation of truth, and society would be better for everyone if the whole world accepted Juniper's understanding. See, he gets it, the dryad nodded enthusiastically. Gabe definitely loves press. It's true, he agreed. And he could really benefit from an open discussion of the subject, too. I mean, I like being roughed up a bit. Well, heck, I like just about anything. But I'm concerned for the first human girl he sleeps with, if he's not a bit more gentle. Gabriel's smile slipped. Uh, wait a second, you know. I mean, really, you don't seem to grasp that that's one scenario where you want to suck on something without trying to suck it off, you know? Rudolph fell back to the stone, howling with laughter. Wait, stop! Gabriel waved his ha- arms frantically. I changed my mind! I'm Rudolph now! Inappropriate! Subject closed! Juniper blinked her eyes twice, glanced back and forth between him and Rudolph. Then sighed, her whole her shoulders slumping. Oh man, I can't say anything right, can I? Oh, come here, you. Ruda said, uh, cheerfully, getting up and going to sit down beside the dryad. She threw an arm over Juniper's shoulders. You're an adorable little numbnut, you know. But don't ever change. Thanks. I'll try not to. Oh, but I don't actually have nuts. I'm not technically a three tree, you know. So noted. Also, nothing on me is numb. Ruda grinned diabli- diabolically at Gabriel. So I hear. Students, companions, fellow adventurers. Rafe waved a spatula at them from the top of the rock. Behold, I give you the glory that is eggs and bacon. And also beans. <coughs> Uh, that's a good place to start uh, this battle early, so we will slip to that. Start early. Ready battle? Play spell? Give me, give me, give me spell. Uh, high ground ish. High ground. Start battle. Okay, so only two of them. Oh, that's the big one. I was wondering. That's fine. That's not. That's not. That's not. That's not terrible. It's not. It's not. It's not.
God damn it, we're gonna lose again. <laughs> It is the less... Oh well. Because all we can do is keep going towards it. Maybe I put down an actual tank. Molten car. Hello, thank you for giving that sound like ten minutes later. We'll do it like this, I guess. This I mean we're gonna lose anyway again. <sighs> thank you for the epic artillery, I'm sorry it didn't work out. <coughs> We have to what? Gabriel exclaimed. Hunt! Professor Raff cried ex exultantly, stomping ahead of them through the tall grass. It was late mid morning, and several of the students were as worn out and hungry as they'd ever been at the end of a long day. Rafe had finally settled down and set a more reasonable pace after he ran out of things to show them. It hadn't taken long. There was a starkly finite number of grass species to be found. And after the flat rock on which they paused for breakfast, the Golden Sea had stubbornly refused to yield any more in interesting geographical features. <clears throat> None of us knows anything about hunting. At least one of you does, Rafe said cheerfully, glancing back over his shoulder. And really, Gabe, you might want to let someone else get the next round of whining. I admire your enthusiasm, but we're all here to learn. And, well... You're all here to learn. So, maybe you set up camp and say, Frost can wind and grip about everything. Uh, is he serious? Frost said, asked nervously, fluttering along just above the gra tall grass. Is this humor? I don't really have anything to grab about. Why the hell didn't you bring enough food? Gabriel pulled on. Because, princess, the whole point of this outing is for you lot to try your hand at keeping your butts alive in the howling wilderness what you want i should bring along a butler set up a pavilion each evening have your meals catered maybe with an orchestra and dances yes gabriel fell to cursing under his breath rafi laughed at him and went on the eggs you ate you just ate were all i brought we've got beans jerky hot tech and tea that is it boys and girls from this point on, you want to eat, you best damn well find something to eat. We could stay stocked up on protein by grazing as we go. There's lots of bugs in this grass. During the general outpouring of groans at this suggestion, and Juniper's confused response, Toby shortened his pace slightly, falling back, falling back to walk beside Trissini, who had appointed herself rear guard. You seem to be in your element, he commented. To her horror, she felt a flush climbing up her neck. She blurted out before it could take hold in her face. Well, it's not my first hike by a long shot. I mean, we didn't do a lot of walking for its own sake, but yeah, sisters in training do cover wilderness survival. It's pretty important for those who plan on going into the Silver Legions. It's not really my thing, per se. Not that I mind it. Oh goodness, Tristan, shut up! She commanded herself silently. I guess, yeah, I'm maybe a little less out of my element than the others? Well, some of the others. I don't mean you. I mean, I don't know what kind of training you have. Shut up! Toby fortunately laughed softly. He had a nice laugh. It made her feel included, not mocked. The walking doesn't bother me. Honest monks keep pretty fit. The sun definitely doesn't, of course. Oh, right, yes, Omnu, Sun God, that makes sense. What is going on? She berated herself. When did I forget how to hold a conversation? 
this had been the first time she talk, they talked alone in weeks. She didn't remember it being this awkward before. Of course, the last time had been before the incident. For those who don't remember, Tristany confessed to Toby. So, the hat. Wait a second, did I not start the battle? I did. The battle has started if you want to go play some unity. Where did they not, where did they not give message battle? But a bear? Yeah. Toby nodded. My complexion is too dark to burn, ordinarily. Anyway, but it's nice not to have to worry about sunstroke. It's the little things that make a paladin's life bearable, eh? He grinned at her sidelong. She couldn't help smiling rather foolishly black. I know you have that aura of serenity you can use. I didn't realize Omnu... Well, actually, now that I opened my mouth, I'm remembering I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't know what Omnis Paladins get. Don't you have any special perks? Like an aura of command or something? She had to laugh at that. Do I seem like I have an aura of command? Well, yes, he said frankly. I'm not the only one who's noticed either. Honestly, I suspect that's why your roommate seems to butt heads with you. I don't think she likes authority very much. Tristan didn't know what to say to that. The silence began to stretch, feeling heavier with each passing second. Almost frantically, she grasped at the first thing that came to mind. <clears throat> well, it's not a divine gift, but apparently I'm a general in the Imperial Army. I mean, automatically, by default, all hands of away are. They didn't tell me about that at the Abbey. Mother Narni probably didn't want it to go through my head. I uh, had a kind of awkward encounter with your roommates the first time I ran across them. Apparently, I can't, they can't even talk to me unless I say at ease first. It was a challenge to figure that out, with them doing nothing but standing as, at attention and answering only direct questions. Talrin had to explain it to me. At that, he laughed again. She could listen to his laugh all day. Yeah, they mentioned that. Rook's got a craze of hero worship going on, going for you, I think. Really? Isn't he the one who looks rumpled even when he's not? Ha! That's a pretty good description. Well, it's like I said, aura of command. If it's not a gift from Ave, it must just be you then. He smiled over at her, and she felt another blush rising. Trying to conceal it, she moved a hand over her ear as though tucking away an errant strand of hair. There was none, of course. Her braid was firmly in place. You managed to make an impression, whatever it is. People either want to fight you or respect you. So far, so good. If they could just avoid the bad subjects. Is that why you've been avoiding me for the past few for the last few weeks? She heard herself ask quietly. Why, brain? What did I ever do to you? She he lowered his eyes, silently watching the grass ahead as they walked. In front, Rafi and the other students carried on their banter. The voices washed over the two of them, finding no purchase. I wasn't sure what you'd want to hear from me, he said finally, after my best friend started a fight with you over nothing. Trisney was so surprised she almost stopped walking. She did stumble slightly, hoping he didn't make anything of it. Toby felt awkward? After being chewed out by Telrin and then Avey? Enduring jabs from Ruda and some sniping from Gabriel himself during their nightly dishwashing less uh dishwashing lessons, it had come to seem to her that everybody blamed her for what happened. She didn't quite know how to explain this to Toby, however. You mean you don't blame me for that? Well, that worked. He looked up at her, startlement right registering on her on his features. What? No, of course not. I got the full the report from Graham himself. Even he says it was his own stupid fault. His eyes widened. Oh, Tris, is that what you thought? I'm so sorry. I didn't make to make you feel. That is, it didn't occur to me that you think it's okay. She said quickly. <clears throat> she was actually not sure what whether it was, but he looked so upset. She hated to see him upset. It's uh actually kind of funny. I guess we both thought the other was mad. 
This time, his laugh had a bitter undertone. Some peacemaker I am. Well, I apologize anyway, Tristany. I certainly didn't want to add to your burdens, especially after Gabriel did. You're not responsible for Gabriel. I sort of am, though. I mean, no, technically I'm not, but I feel that way. I've always kind of looked out for him. Well, we did for each other. It really kills me that you guys don't get along. He's like a brother to me. And you're, and you're one of the most admirable people I know. People have to make their own mistakes, she said vaguely. After not speaking with him for weeks, she did not want to talk about Gabriel Arquin. He really found her admirable? The thing is, he went on quietly, Gabe is... I think he'd just be... I think he'd be just about the best person I know if he would just think before acting or opening his mouth. You really haven't seen what he's like deep down. He works hard to do the right thing, and he's a great guy to have your back. He's just... well, a little reckless, I guess. Being thoughtless isn't a charming personality quirk on anyone, she said stiffly. For a half-demon, I'd say it qualifies as a real problem. Did they really have to talk about this? You're not wrong, Toby said solemnly. And I'm only just starting to realize that. He's always just been Gabe to me. We grew up together and, well, maybe I have a blind spot there. It never occurred to me before that he might actually hurt someone. Trissini held her silence. She didn't trust herself to say anything that wouldn't offend him. <coughs> Guys! Abruptly, Professor Rafe rushed over to join them, scaring the other students in his abrupt change of course. His expression was even more maniacally gleeful than usual. Trissini felt a sudden urge to kick him in the shin. Guys, 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 guys! Come here! Come on over here! You gotta see this! So say, he charged off to the left of the group. Onward to glory, Toby muttered, and Tristany shot him a grin. Raphael left a trail of mashed trail tall grass leading to a patch of leafy green stalks that towered over them. He skidded to a halt in before this, leaving the freshman to meander in behind him. Flinging both arms wide, he actually hopped up and down twice in excitement. Behold! A wonder of the Golden Sea! A marvelous plant! A gift from the very gods themselves. Corn. For a moment, only the rustling of the breeze in the grass could be heard. A hawk cried in the distance. You rushed all the way over here to show us corn? Gabriel said in disgust. He had moved more slowly than the others in responding to Raphael's enthusiasm and now stood at the rear edge of the group. Hell yes I did, uh, Raphael curled. Corn is awesome, um, said Teal. This, this is cultivated. Look, it's planted in neat rows, and the patch is almost square. Isn't that great? The professor crushed. Ooh, and it looks about right too. Everybody, grab a year. You've never tasted corn till you've had it right off the stalk. Or, Rula said loudly, or we all back the hell away and get the hell out of here before whoever's ballsy enough to farm in the golden goddamn sea comes back and finds us fucking around with our corn. Uh, yeah, Gabe said one nervously. About that. Everybody, everyone turned to look at him and the group shied away as one. An elf had appeared out of the tall grass. She wore simple buckskin shirt and trousers, bleached almost white and decorated with erratic vertical streaks of brown and gold that blended seamlessly with the waving grasses. Similar markings were painted on her face and dark strands were dyed throughout through her honey blonde hair. The camouflage was nearly perfect. Even having stepped out of the grass into the cleared area around the cornfield, she seemed to almost fade into it. The cleverness of her garb wasn't what held their attention, however. In her right hand was a wand, the tip of which was pressed against Gabriel's throat. Bum bum bum! Cliffhanger! 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 Alright, um. A good. A good hour and a half? Wait, no, hour and 45 minutes, plus minus. Um, 
we got through two chapters. I think I will leave it there for now. Uh, let's switch back to just chatting so I can actually look at who to raid. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Not too many people here today. Uh, but nonetheless, thank you uh, for coming. Thank you, so that's lag. Thank you, Tonesy, for being here. Thank you, um, Daddy Ray, for being here. And I think that's all. Um, thank you for a bunch of people who placed units in my battles. Um, okay, bye bye. Uh, I'm gonna just place down this because it's not gonna matter. Because there's been nothing. So far, I'm just gonna stop battle and end it. It does, doesn't matter really. I think this is the highest level thing I have. Forty-five damage or something. Yeah, so much. Oh wait, I forgot to switch to fucking Raiders battle. There we go. Oh, this is working. This is working. I did not expect this to be working. Why is this working? Oh, he's dead. Never mind. <gasps> he lived! He lived! We win these! How? How? Oh, it's because it's a vampire. He's in the air. I got it. I understand now. No one gets this 15 gold because none of you decided to join me. That's fine, that's fair, you know what, sometimes, sometimes, uh, that's how the cookie crumbles. Um, we will get back to this next time, I don't think I will continue for today. No offline battles for me, no sir. Um, yeah, let's see who's there to raid, if anyone is still here and they want to give me a raid suggestion, I'll gladly take it. Otherwise, I have two people I can raid today. I have a World of Warcraft streamer who is doing a raid today. Or a Horizon Forbi Forbidden West. If there's anyone who has a, a prevailing opinion or either. If there's anyone even still in chat. <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't look like there's anyone in chat. Uh, I guess in that case, we will go to the World of Warcraft streamer, because I've never raided her, and this is a good chance to. It's Nance. Is there an 8 after that, or no? There's no eat after that. Let's go. What? I'm not allowed to raid Nance. Are you serious? Huh. Yeah, I can't raid Nance. What the f... Alright then. Well, I guess since I can't raid Nance, uh, go check out, go check out It's Nance, uh, as commission my SO, It's Nance. Uh, a good friend of mine from when I studied in Sydney, uh, a cutie, go give, go give her a follow, um, just watch, watch her play, uh, watch her raid, really. That's what she does these days. Um, otherwise, I guess we are going to raid someone else. Uh, uh, we will be raiding Red Oi. Why is this not typing? Oi. Did I get the name right? Okay, that should work. That has worked. Alright. 
Um, yeah, I don't really have much words. Uh, sorry, stream was delayed slash uh, the weird timing. I am very much suckered into Overwatch right now. <laughs> um, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Daddy Ray and uh, uh, Tonesy for being here. Uh, I don't know who else was here, but you know, thanks for being here. I guess uh, I will continue reading this uh, book every every week. I guess um, well, maybe not every week, but yeah. Uh, this vod will be available on YouTube, which is under exclamation mark socials. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think there's anything else for me to say. So, thank you all for joining me. Um, i see you all next time. And uh, uh, I don't have any other words for you. So, bye. How long do I hold this before I click right now? I don't know. Uh...